What's up guys, glad to have you guys back for another video where I find awesome things to simplify your life. Today I'm going to share with you guys why I switched to the Blackberry Key 2 from the Samsung Note 8. And some of you guys might be like, what the heck, who uses a Blackberry anymore? Well for a content creator like me who replies a lot of YouTube comments and I use WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger and Instagram a lot, this works a lot better than typing on a huge glass screen which is inaccurate, slow and really just when I was using this, doing work on this really felt like a burden to me so I had to leave everything onto my laptop to reply and write emails and it's good for batching but in life there are a lot of times when you're free when you're waiting in line when you have a minute when uh, you're in the washroom and when uh, you know just stuff like that those are the times when this comes in really handy when I can reply my comments here and there so that there's less work later Versus with the Note 8, uh, when I had free time, I just watched YouTube, Netflix, or browse on Amazon with this. So it really felt like I was more of a consumer than a creator with the BlackBerry. And yes, I had my doubts before getting this. I was worried about the screen size, the pixel density, the processing power, and of course the camera as well. And this video is meant to demystify those worries for you and tell you why I love this over my Samsung Note 8 and why I haven't looked back ever since I switched. So that you can see if this is the right phone for you as well, my friend. Okay, so in terms of size, both phones are around the same size actually. The BlackBerry Key 2 is a bit smaller, so uh, they're both really big phones. So obviously the screen is smaller by this much. It's around 1.75 inches, but um, in reality when I use my apps, it doesn't actually make that much of a difference because when you go on Instagram, it looks like that. And when you scroll, you can actually use the keys over here versus here. So of course the pictures look a bit bigger, but uh, it's not that big of a difference in my opinion because you still have to swipe like that. Ooh, this is kind of cool. And then in terms of screen quality size, I actually have a matte screen protector right here, so it looks a bit blurry, but for this test, I'm gonna take it off. You know, that's just the price of being a tech reviewer. To give you the best look at what it actually looks like, that's the screen protector here. If you have a matte screen protector, it would look something like that, but better, I hope. The colors are a bit more blue on this. You can set the uh, white balance, but that's what it looks like. So when you do zoom in, there is quite a difference. It does look a bit better on the Note 8, but if you use the BlackBerry by itself, you really would not notice, in my opinion. So there might be a bit more scrolling involved, but uh, you know what, that's really about it. And by the way, this is my little rig setup, uh, filming my phone over here, and it might be a bit more natural doing this while talking to you guys. Okay, now in terms of picture quality, we can zoom in a bit and see how much pixel there is on my face. Uh, you know what? They're around the same. So I can't really tell the difference. It does look uh, a bit better, again, on the screen over here. But again, if you only use this, you won't really notice. But in terms of pixel quality, they look around the same. So really, when I look at pictures, it doesn't really make that much of a difference to me. And of course, you can put them on landscape and they're around the same size in this format. So you can see that the colors are more vibrant than the Blackberry. The good thing is that the Blackberry makes my teeth look a bit whiter than uh, it actually is. <laughs> and this is what YouTube looks like. It's kind of this big. Purchased this. And then, Today we have okay, the okay, we don't need to listen to you, Mike. And then when we slip it to this side, landscape mode, it is this big. It might seem a bit brighter on the Note 8, but it, it's actually around the same if you have the right angle. So this, it looks really good like that with the note 8 kind of flickers on camera i'm not sure why that is but that's just what it is so although the size is a bit smaller it's not actually that big of a difference because you got these two black bars over here as you can see and um really when i was using it watching netflix and youtube and all that it's not that big of a deal on the blackberry key 2 it still works really well the other thing that we want to note here is the processing speed or the speed that you open apps. If you're opening new apps on your phone, there is a slight lag as we see here, like that. But if we go back, once it's opened and it's running in the background, it's actually the same speed or around the same speed. So let's go back again and do that with Instagram. As you'll see, the slight lag, this is a lot faster by like a second or two. And when we go back and reopen it, Oh, bam! 
they're around the same speed. So it's really not that big of a deal. But in terms of playing games and all that, the Note 8 is gonna be a lot better. So if you are a gamer who plays PUBG, Fortnite, or whatever the heck that there is, you're gonna go with a phone that has a higher processing power. And next, we're gonna check out the camera and what's gonna be a good model for us. Okay, let me see. I need something that looks good. You guys will do. So we got Mr. Wolverine here and Iron Man. Okay, so anyways, this is what it looks like with decent lighting. I'm gonna take a picture, oh, bam. And same thing with the Blackberry, like that. Okay, so this is the pictures that we just took. So at, when we zoom in on over here, the Samsung Note 8 is very crisp. And when we zoom in over here, it's, it's just as crisp or even better in my opinion. <laughs> So let's zoom into Mr. Wolverine over here. Oh, no, I can't zoom in anymore. I don't know why I can't do that. So, I mean, if you really want to, you can zoom in that much on the Note 8, but uh, I think the Blackberry is good enough for me. And the last thing that you might be worried about is the keyboard real estate, because when you type on your normal phone anyways, there is a keyboard over here. In my experience, it's actually around the same size after the keyboard has popped up, because you get that much screen size. And I don't know if I'm making sense here, but, I'm just trying to say it's not that big of a deal that the screen is smaller. Anyways, two things that I do have to say that I miss about the Note 8 is the fact that it can charge wirelessly. I can put it on a wireless charging pad and boom, it's charging and that it's waterproof. Because you know what? Your phones are actually really freaking dirty. You take them everywhere, food gets on them, other nasty things get on them, and they're actually potentially, maybe, even more dirty than a public toilet seat. With the Blackberry Key 2, it is not waterproof, so I just have to take an alcohol wipe and wipe it all around to keep it clean. It's not that big of a deal, but it was something that I really missed. And something obvious that you guys might ask is, oh Mike, what about the pen on the Samsung Note 8? Isn't it useful? Isn't it a productive thing as well? In my experience, I actually never use the pen that much. It comes in handy when you need it. It's something that's nice to have. You can write on the screen and write notes and all that good stuff, but um, I only used it a handful of times. It's really useful if you are signing documents and you're all important and stuff, signing contracts and stuff like that, but for an average guy like me, um, no, I just usually use it when I need to show someone something visually so that they understand what I'm trying to say. Or, you know, play tic-tac-toe on it. So, in the end, the pen is nice, but not a must-have. Okay, enough about the worries and the comparisons. I hope that cleared things up. Now I'm gonna tell you guys why I love the BlackBerry Key 2. Okay, so first of all, as you know, it has a keyboard on it. And what that means is that you have 20 customizable keys. So my K button is actually the keyboard button and uh, over here you can see what I've uh, customized here as my long press and short press. This means that you can actually customize two actions in one button. So the coolest thing here is that I made I to be my Instagram, Y to be YouTube, M to be music. So for example, if I want to go Instagram, it's bam right there and I don't have to go back to the home screen to switch to another app. If I want to do this within an app already, all I got to do is hold this button over here with the nine dots and switch between apps just like that. To Chrome, to my Amazon, to music, to Instagram, to YouTube, bam, just like that. And then of course the typing experience on this is awesome as well. As you can see here in my notes, uh, I can type something like, hey, what's up? So the cool thing is that all the secondary buttons are on here as well, like your number pad, your uh, brackets and stuff. You can swipe down to get the keyboard up to choose, for example, I want a bracket on the Y. And there are gestures like this too, where I can backspace to delete with two fingers like that, bam, it's super quick. Or I actually programmed my button over here, the dollar sign to be the control button. So you can use keyboard shortcuts like control A to select all and delete, control Z to undo, control Y to redo. And then you can actually double tap to get the scroll on and then hold shift to highlight. And if I wanna control X to cut, I can. And then control V to paste. Are you guys seeing this? Are you guys seeing what's up? So that's really useful. It actually feels like a computer and that it's a tool versus just a device. So that's really cool. I want to delete all that and bam. Because most of you would be used to stuff like this where you have to press the backspace 
and wait for it to load, load, delete, delete, delete. The other thing is the typing accuracy. I found that it's really nice to type like ha 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 or like this stuff like really quickly, but as for actually typing and all that, it actually takes more effort because you have to, instead of touching it, you do have to press into it, so you don't actually type faster. But because you press into it, it gives it more of a tactile feel, and for myself, I like that a lot more. It's a lot funner typing on this than a glass keyboard, which you can still do it, like, hello. Oh, see, that's why you don't type on the glass. So really besides that, there are a few other things that make the BlackBerry really good. Uh, so first is its build quality. When you take off the case, you can feel that the whole thing is like pretty slim. And in fact, it's actually too slim. I added a case so that first it protects the phone, but it also gives you a wider grip. So it's more comfortable when you type on it because I actually found that without the case, this is actually too narrow for my hands and it's just not good. It's made of a black stainless steel outside and the back is using this Blackberry rubber texture. It's very premium and the buttons are very slick and sharp as well. So the build quality on this is sweet. And by the way, the fingerprint scanner is on the front versus the back. So it's a lot more convenient to use. And I gotta say it's quite accurate as well. So that's something I really liked on the Blackberry versus the Note 8. But besides that, the battery life actually lasts two days for me. So it's pretty dang good. This only lasts a day at most. However, its downfall is that it's not waterproof. It only uses one speaker for outputting voice. The other, I think, is the microphone. And the screen isn't super scratch resistant. I haven't scratched it yet, but that's why I put the screen protector on so that I don't have to freak out about that kind of stuff. So really, there you have it, guys. Like, the BlackBerry has become my go-to phone. I've never looked back and even thought of using my Note 8 again. I'm probably gonna sell this because I love this so much. This really feels like a tool to me that I can use and really, it makes me feel like I don't have to bring out my laptop, I don't have to bring out my iPad to get work done. So if you're thinking of switching, I really hope I helped you answer some questions here. And if you do end up getting a new phone, you can always sell your old phone to make it less painful. Anyways, I really hope I helped you guys figure out which is the right kind of phone for you. And remember to like and subscribe if the video has helped you in any way at all. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye! So besides all those cool things, it actually has the DTEC security and BlackBerry Hub and all these extra BlackBerry features. Uh, the thing is, I didn't find them that useful. The most useful thing, again, was the keyboard. So I didn't bother mentioning the other ones. And um, yeah.